Hello everyone and welcome to this UCL Connect event, How to Become a School Governor. My name is Lucy Asimides and I work in the Alumni Relations team at UCL. I'm very excited to be a part of this event and I can't wait to hear from our guest speakers today. Um, we have representatives from Governors for Schools, a member of UCL's Access and Widening Participation Office, and a UCL alum who will share their experiences of what it has been like to become a school governor. Next slide, please. For those of you who don't know about the UCL Connect series, this event is part of the series which looks at improving the professional development skills and expertise of alumni and students across the global UCL community. Whether you're established in your career, moving into a new industry, or considering your options post-graduation, the UCL Connect series has something for everyone. The programme is a mix of virtual and in-person events which are run around once a month. Next slide, please. On the screen are examples of just some of the previous sessions we have run. If you do wish to re-watch any of these sessions, please do follow the URL listed below. Next slide, please. Before we begin with the event, I just want to let everyone know that this event is being recorded. There will be an opportunity to ask some questions to the panel, and you can do this by writing your questions in the Q&A section, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. Please put your questions in here at any point during the session and those questions which get upvoted will be answered first. For those of you who are not already aware, there is the option to bring up live captions on your screen. These need to be individually turned on. So if you would like to use this feature, you will see a button that has three dots and the word more at the bottom of your screen. Click that button, then click captions, followed by the option that says show captions. This will enable the feature for you. Next slide, please. Up on the screen is what to expect from today's session. We will begin with some introductions, followed by the presentation and wrapping up the event with an opportunity for the audience to ask questions. Next slide, please. So I'm delighted to welcome today's speakers, starting with Matt Lucas from UCL's Widening Participation Programme, who will give us an overview of the programme he works on. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to meet you all. I'm excited to speak with you all shortly and give you a bit of an overview of the work we do in our team. Um, and now to Claire and uh, Claire Skinsley and Emma Harris from Governors for Schools. Thanks, Lisa. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Claire Skinsley, and as Lisa has just mentioned, I work for Governors for Schools. I am the South and West London Partnerships Manager, and I help our volunteers go from application stage all the way through to when they're appointed onto a school governing board, as well as managing relationships with schools and local authorities. Hi everybody, really nice to join you today. My name's Emma Harris. I'm Head of Governor Recruitment at Governors for Schools, so I work closely with Claire. Um, I've also been a school governor for the past five years and I'll be in the Q&As answering your questions. Thank you. And we're delighted to welcome UCL alum, Raki Jagwani, back to UCL for this session. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm Raki. I'm a co-opted governor at Windsor Primary School in Newham in East London. Um, and this is where I grew up. Um, I've also previously been a governor at Drew Primary, um, who I was matched with through Governors for School. Um, before joining um, financial services and, and working where I currently do, um, I used to work in out of school hours learning for um, Newham. Uh, so for me to be able to come back and give back to uh, my local community and support the local schools um, has been a really exciting opportunity. And I've been a governor for uh, coming up to about four years now. Thank you, Raki. Um, so with no further ado, let's, um, I'd like to get the presentation section of the event underway. Um, and so I'll hand over to you, Matt. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just do my introduction now. So, yeah, my name is Matt Lucas. Um, I'm a widening participation manager at UCL, um, and I'm also a school governor at Ark Walworth Academy, um, a secondary school in South East London. So my short segment today is going to introduce you to the work um, of my team at UCL and the potential value um, a network of UCL associated governors can bring to some of the work we do at UCL. So um, in terms of the team I work in, so um, I work in the Access and Wide participation team at UCL. 
So our aim is to ensure that all students have an equal chance of entering UCL, regardless of background, ethnicity, age or disability. So our stated aim is to make sure that we have a more representative cohort of undergraduates that we're working to tackle all barriers that present those from underrepresented groups accessing UCL and highly selective universities um, and that they can su succeed once they get here. Um, in terms of some of the barriers we look to address, um, so broadly speaking, we fit into four main categories, um, as you can see on the screen. So prior attainment is a key one. So there's huge gaps in attainment um, that start quite early on in school for some young people and have only widened since the pandemic. So on average, underrepresented groups don't get the neat grades required to enter UCL. So our work, um, a large part of our work looks to address that attainment gap between the most advantaged and, and the least advantaged. Um, our information advice and guidance, this is another big barrier for young people, particularly for students who've got no history of higher education in their families um, or within their communities. Geography plays a big role in some of the barriers students face. So um, there's quite a lot of cold spots around the UK, um, certainly sort of um, outside of London as well. Um, and admissions can also pose a barrier to some students, such as the entrance requirements um, and the different patterns of application that young people face. Um, next slide, please. So some of the barriers, some, some of the ways we work within our team um, to overcome these barriers, I won't go through each of those, um, but we're in quite a large suite of activities um, across our department. Um, working with students from year nine up to year 13. Some projects go a little bit younger than that, um, down to year seven for some visits to UCL. Um, we do a lot of work on prior attainment. So we have a maths programme and a literacy attainment raising programme. Um, we offer a large suite of programmes and activities um, addressing information, advice and guidance. Um, those run from year seven up to year 13 across the widening participation and access team. We have a range of um, projects which address geographical geographical barriers. So our residential summer schools, which bring students to UCL for a week on campus. Um, and we have some targeted work around the UK, such as in the Midlands um, and Norfolk. And we have an East London um, wing of our department as well. Um, and finally, we work with the admissions team to run um, contextual offers for some of the young people um, who are applying to UCL. And then final slide from me. Um, so just to give a little bit of context, I suppose, of why um, I'm here today and, and speaking to you from the perspective of our department. Um, we do see quite a lot of value in having a network of UCL affiliated governors, and we're hoping we can perhaps um, carry on the conversation with quite a lot of people in this call further down the line, if people do go on to belong go on to become governors. Um, so the main sort of benefits we see of, of working with schools in the way we do and having a network of UCL affiliated governors. I've obviously there exists an attainment gap in schools and we hope that having governors within schools will allow us to, to um, widen our reach and give you the tools when you get into schools to hopefully see a little bit of impact. Um, obviously working with schools is a key part of our work. It's going to allow us to reach more young people and more schools in an organic way and hopefully widen and deepen the impact we can have in a wide range of schools. And as I said, following this, this call, we hope to be able to carry on the conversation with um, various people in the call today um, and carry on those conversations and see if we can share the work we do and give you some of the tools um, and introduce you some of the projects we do, which may be able to add value to the schools that you end up working in in the future. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, Matt. That was really helpful to know. Um, and so now to hand over to Claire um, at Governors for Schools to share uh, their presentation. Thanks, Matt. That was really interesting. And thank you, Lisa. I'll just get my slides up. just to make sure everyone can see that okay. Yeah, great. Perfect. So I wanted to start today then by just speaking a little bit about um, what governors for schools do. So who we are and what we do essentially. So we've been working in England for over 20 years um, to improve education through effective governance. And we launched our service in WOWS in November, 2020. 
We know that having a talented and committed volunteers active in board roles can really transform a school and we work with schools to understand what they need with schools registering their board vacancies with us for free. When schools register their vacancies with us, they say if there are any specific skills or experience that we're looking for. We'll then work with our volunteers to find the best match and make introductions. During your time with us, we provide ongoing support so that you can develop your skills in the role and have the knowledge to succeed from the start. We aim to not only find volunteers with the right skills, but to also ensure that boards are representative of the wider community and we're really successful in engaging a broad range of people. So the big question then, what is a school governor? The governor role is strategic rather than operational. Governors don't get involved with the day-to-day -day running of the school, but they work at board level to support and challenge the school's leadership team to drive school improvement. A school governor should be passionate about improving opportunities for all young people. And to do this, they volunteer their time, skills and experience to impact the effectiveness of the school they support. So why become a school governor? There are several reasons why you might consider becoming a school governor, um, and a few of them are just no noted on the slide. So one reason would be that you really care about the education that children receive, and you want to drive that improvement. Um, you want to make an important contribution to your local community. It might be that you enjoy a challenging and rewarding role that helps you develop professionally and personally. You're keen to help all children do better at school now and in the future. And you want to bring what you've learned in your professional life onto the board to best support a school. So I guess this ties in with our previous slide, what makes a good governor then? So again, there are numerous qualities to being a good governor, such as having the time to commit to the role, being a critical friend to the head teacher, being objective, having accountability, providing and applying your specialist knowledge to the role while also being a champion of the school. It's important to highlight that the list on the slides doesn't name a specific background or discipline, um, which is why people from all walks of life with all different skill sets can become school governors. Another big question then, why do we need school governors? So you'll be happy to know there's a continual need for school for volunteers as vacancies are registered throughout the year. Um, and school governors are also one of the largest volunteer groups across England and Wales. We have thousands of vacancies registered us with governors for schools. In fact, we have just over 5,000 vacancies registered with us right now, um, with some areas in more need than others. And looking at the pie chart on the screen, you can see that most of the vacancies are in the primary phase of education. Um, and this is just based on the fact that most schools are primary schools. So with this in mind, we do really encourage you to consider being as open as possible when thinking about the type of school that you may want to support. Okay, so moving on now then to governor responsibilities. In this slide, I'll just touch on briefly the governor responsibilities and then in the next few slides, I'll go into a bit more detail. So school governors enable their school to run effectively and provide excellent education for children. They have three core responsibilities, planning the strategic direction of the school. So there's a clear vision in line with the school's ethos overseeing the financial management of the school and ensuring its money is well spent and appropriately accounted for. And thirdly, holding senior leaders to account for the educational performance of the school and the outcomes of its pupils. So just to delve a little bit more then into um, the strategic um, side of the role. As a governor, you play a key role in setting the vision for the school and helping the head teacher to think about how that builds into all areas. Is the vision ambitious for every child and what is in place to make it happen? If the school has a clear vision, it can be the blueprint for every child's success. Think about how children, staff and families are engaged and consulted. Make sure that it's clear and embedded. You'll also be involved in areas such as policy development and agree in the school development plan. 
All of these areas require a range of skills and your expertise can really make a real difference. For example, an educationalist can help to ask questions and build a strong approach around the areas like curriculum. Someone with financial expertise can help the school to budget effectively and deliver a sustainable future for the school. Someone with marketing expertise might be able to help the school um, consider if it's being presented in the best po possible light um, and to ensure that pupils are proud of the school that they attend. Um, and someone with community knowledge um, can contribute a deeper consideration for local issues. So in regards to financial management then, governors don't set the budget, but they must oversee it and ensure that it's spent in line with the strategic vision for the school. The level of responsibility may differ between boards, but something common to consider is the breadth of competing needs for the budget. Building a sustainable future for the school is vital to supporting educational achievement. You don't have to be an expert in finance, and that's the point in having mixed skills across the board, um, but you will learn as you go. You'll contribute some skills and gain others. As a governor, part of your role is to monitor and evaluate, and to be effective in that, you need to be able to ask questions and be aware of all of the information available. Being able to support and challenge the head is one of the most key aspects of being a governor. A good example of how you might do this is examining the progress and attainment data. You'll examine how different groups within the school are progressing. What is in place to support children with SEN, for example, or children with English as an additional language? By discussing with the board, you can really understand what the data means and how it affects each child. Another way of looking at the responsibility of accountability is to break it down into watchdog, mediator and champion. As a watchdog, you're there to make sure the right questions are asked, seek evidence to back up statements being made and don't accept what's being reported or planned on face value, but make sure that there's robust reasoning behind it. As a mediator, you'll be juggling the needs of the students, the staff and the parents, as well as more practical things like balancing the budget. You'll be sat on a board with people from a variety of backgrounds, with a variety of different skills and expertise, um, and you need to bring people and their opinions together to ensure that the board is effective. Lastly, it's vital to be a champion. You need to celebrate the successes of the school and make sure that progress is recognised. As a volunteer, being passionate about the school is really what makes the role so satisfying. Okay, so different roles on the governing board. As you can see, there are a variety of roles that make up a school governing board. Boards will usually have between seven and 12 governors, these include the head teacher, as that is part of their role, a chair and maybe a vice chair who will give the governing board a clear lead and direction, ensuring that all governors work as an effective team. There will be a clerk of governors who support, who offers administrative support and advice to the board. You will have community and co-opted governors, and these are appointed onto the board because of a specific skill or insight that they bring. Um, you will also have local authority governors who were nominated by the LA and brought onto the board in that way. Foundation governors who must be practicing in the same religion as the school and be signed off by their faith leader. And you will also have parent governors who would have a child at school. If the school is unable to recruit a parent governor, a proxy parent governor which is someone who has a child of school age um, could join the board. So it may be that you also see a proxy parent governor on the board as well. Um, boards may adopt different structures with different levels of responsibility, such as committees and link roles, but this can be discussed in more detail when matching you with the school um, if you do apply. Essentially, each of the, the names for, for these different governing boards just describe the different ways of being appointed as a governor. The role is still fundamentally the same as it still involves the strategic, financial and accountable focus that I've described in the previous slides. So I just wanted to touch on then the, the main difference between governor roles and trustee roles. So in governance structure terms, 
Trustees sit at board level and are responsible for all of the schools in an academy trust, as compared to governors who are responsible for individual schools. There can be anything from one school to 40 plus schools within academy trusts, and the budget will vary accordingly. Funding for academies is delivered direct from the government rather than through the local authority, meaning that trusts need to ensure transparency around its management and effective use. This is where external skills from the business sector are especially useful, as education leaders may not have been required to manage multi-million pound budgets before. It's really important to note that the trustee role is a dual role. As well as being a trustee of the trust, individuals also operate as a director of a company, meaning they're listed on company's house and subject to company law. Beyond this important distinction, however, the trustee role is in many ways similar to the governor role, in that it is a strategic, eyes-on, hands-off role involving being a critical friend, challenging the executive of the trust, of the trust as opposed to the head teacher of an individual school and holding the executive to account for its decision making. Like the governor matching process um, here at Governors for Schools, we also strive to meet your preferences when matching you with a trust and we have a separate dedicated trustee recruitment service for that and if that is something you're interested in um, we would also be able to provide further information on that. And now I will pass over to Raki, who will speak about her governor journey so far. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, with regards to my journey, um, because I'd worked previously with my local authority in out of school hours learning, when I transferred into the private sector, um, having worked there for a, a number of years, um, I wanted to find a way to give back to my community. Um, and I actually attended a presentation like this um, at one of my previous workplaces where governors from school had come along um, and they'd explained the responsibilities for being a governor. Uh, and that's how I became um, a co-opted governor at Drew Primary School. I got matched um, with the school uh, through Governors for Schools um, and uh, I joined um, their board as um, uh, a trustee for the school. So it was, it was part of the Learning in Harmony Trust. Around about the same time, um, one of my previous bosses who was stepping down as a governor at Windsor Primary, he put me in touch with the head teacher, which is a, uh, at Windsor Primary, which was a locally um, local authority uh, run school. So the, the head teacher was responsible for everything. Um, and uh, we had a chat and the ethos um, for both schools, the objectives for both schools um, were, you know, matched my own uh, sort of personal philosophies. Um, and that's how I ended up being um, uh, voted in uh, to be uh, governors at, at both of those schools. And what that enabled me to do actually was to compare and contrast how um, the schools are run, um, both by a trust and both by local authorities. Uh, and it also gave me the opportunity to volunteer for different things at both of the different schools. So I was um, link governor for English, for example, at Drew, um, whereas for Windsor, it was for maths um, at the time. I'm now um, having stepped down at Drew um, because uh, personal reasons I uh, needed to look at my volunteering sort of capacity. Um, I ended up staying with Windsor Primary because I felt that it needed um, some more support uh, from the local community. Um, within a trust, you have, I think, a much more uh, structured um, kind of uh, support system uh, and they can draw on um, uh, support and resources from uh, the schools within that uh, trust. Um, so I stayed with um, Windsor and since then I've now become uh, vice chair um, of the governing board. I'm also chair of the finance and premises um, committee and the link governor for um, safeguarding um, as well, um, having previously been the link governor for SEND. Um, and the one thing that I found um, by being on um, the governing board is that it's um, it's two way, there's lots of give and take. I've taken away um, lots of skills from being on the board in terms of challenging, asking questions, 
um, looking at uh, you know, data that I'm not normally very familiar with, everything from uh, finances um, to uh, attainment data. Um, and I've also been able to bring um, sort of my experiences and perspectives um, to the schools. So having grown up in, in East London, you know, uh, being aware of uh, the challenges and, you know, understanding um, how uh, that particular uh, borough is made up, the uh, the cultural diversity, the needs of um, the students in that borough means that, you know, I'm able to um, uh, ask questions about how the school is addressing um, those particular needs, um, how the school is, um, you know, dealing with challenges um, like, uh, uh, having so many students on um, uh, receiving pupil premium or free school meals. Um, and also, uh, you know, what is the school doing to kind of enhance the offering um, to students from um, East London? Because it's not an area that is generally, um, in the past at least, from my experience, having been to school there, um, an area that, you know, people really tended to aspire um, to, to much. So, um, you know, I'm probably um, one of the few people from my school um, who's, who ended up being able to go to university or, or wanted to go to university um, and to be a role model to children in that local area to say, you know, these, nothing is outside of your, uh, nothing is outside of your um, uh, uh, reach really and you can end up working in the city and you can end up working and traveling all over the world um, and you can take advantage of lots of different opportunities that are out there um, that that was kind of a, a really big um, driver for me um, as well so that enables you to take your experiences feed them into the school my background is internal audit so I understand um, risks, controls, um, identifying them, looking at um, solutions. So one of the things with Windsor that I have been able to do is, you know, support them with challenges that they see. For example, trying to get um, building works done at the school and, you know, asking for plans and working with the head teacher to, uh, you know, uh, um, liaise with the local authority. So some again, as the um, uh, Governors for Schools team have said, and some of the questions that I've seen come through, you can commit as much or as little time, um, you know, there's a minimum in terms of attending at least the governing board meetings um, during term time, but to volunteer to sit on additional committees, make visits to the school, support the school when they're having challenges, it's it's down to you as to how much time you've got to give and you know how much um uh uh you enjoy the challenge of learning something new so working with the local authority on building works was something a little bit new to me but we've managed to get you know um a lot of stuff done over the summer for the school um just by me being on a phone call um it adds weight being that critical friend um, challenging the, you know, the school's uh, budgets, et cetera, and the training and the support that's offered through Governors for Schools, plus um, uh, the the training that's put on by um, local authorities or by the trust themselves have been a fantastic way to kind of upskill myself and learn more about the education system now, even though I've, uh, you know, been through the, the UK education system, there's been a lot of changes since I was last at school. So um, I have felt really supported um, and I feel like I'm contributing, plus I'm also taking away. And those visits to the school, when you speak to students, when you speak to staff and you see all the initiatives that the staff have undertaken as well, it's, um, it's fantastic. I can't put it into words sometimes, the, the joy that I see when, you know, you have parents come and talk to you and you have children come and talk to you um, during your visits um, to the school as to how much of a difference your contribution, your time is making to them.
Thanks. Thanks, Rocky. Um, that, that was great. Thank you for contributing. Um, it's always great to hear from a governor themselves. Um, how the governor role is. And it's also really nice to hear that your your process at Governors for Schools you found quite useful and in fact are still kind of finding our training resources useful. Um, so thank you for that. I'm sure there'll be some questions in the in the chat for you. <laughs> sure, no problem. Thank you. Um, perfect. So just moving on now, I know there was there's some questions on the chat kind of surrounding commitment I do have a few slides left um so I'll get I'll get on with them so just to touch on commitment then in regards to how much time per month you might spend on the role this can obviously differ but based on feedback from our volunteers the governor role takes on average seven hours per month this can vary depending on whether you take on additional roles such as chair but most boards will meet once per half term or so um, you'll also need to factor in time to prepare for meetings, visit the school, report back on your findings, as well as getting involved um, in school celebration events too. Um, and it, it may be that one month you spend more time and one month you spend less time. I guess it really depends on what is going on in the school at that specific time. The term of office is usually four years. So it is best to consider the role as long term. It can take a while to get to know the school and start to see the impact that you're having. Um, obviously, it is a volunteer role and your personal circumstances can change. So it may be that you have to resign before the end of your term, which is absolutely fine. You would just have to be transparent with the school. Um, but you may equally put yourself forward for a second or even a third term. Um, some schools will also consider associate governors who may be involved in specific projects for a more limited time too. In regards to travel, when you apply, you can tell us how far would be practical for you to travel to a school. The larger area that we can search for vacancies, the quicker we're likely to be able to find you a vacancy. So for example, if you wanted a primary school within a five minute walk from your house, you may be waiting longer than if you've put your travel preferences to 30 minutes. Um, and I think that goes without saying really. Um, some schools are also willing to take on a governor through remote governance, where a governor would attend either mostly or entirely remotely. So that's something else to consider. We don't have really have many remote vacancies in London, I should mention. Um, we more have them up and down the country in more rural areas. But there is always that option if you do have a connection to a different area in the country where you might like to um, off, offer your, your volunteering time. And then there is that option there. And we can kind of discuss that more with you at the stage when you're matched with your partnership team member. Okay, so just to touch on liability then, when you join the governing board, you are seen as a collective entity that supports the school. So any decisions or strategic oversight that you provide is seen as collective. So there's shared liability. And what that means is that if the board was found to be not supporting the school in a sufficient manner or almost let down the school, it's likely that the whole board will be dismissed as they will be found jointly liable for their failure. There can be misconceptions around personal liability. The only way a governor could be found personally liable would be as if they were found to have acted criminally or negligently um, or fraudulently. So our advice and guidance is as long as you act genuinely with honest intentions and motives with the best interest of the school, then there should be nothing to worry about um, regarding liability. Where there are any financial losses or debt by the school from poor financial oversight, then often they will have insurance policies to cover that money. As a governor, you're not personally liable for the debts of the school. So how might you benefit from becoming a school governor? You will develop transferable skills from the wealth of opportunities that being a school governor can offer, benefiting you both professionally and personally. And Raki touched on this. Um, you have the opportunity to develop experience across a range of skills that you may not otherwise be exposed to in your normal role. Our professional development research actually found that by undertaking a governor role, confidence increased, performance was enhanced in the workplace, and there was a reported growth in preparation, 
flexibility and agility, analyzing performance data in KPIs, financial skills and value for money. Um, secondly, you can gain board experience. So making board level decisions, as well as having the opportunity to network and collaborate with others in your community, um, which can broaden your worldview. Um, and during your term, you will have the impact on the education of hundreds, if not thousands of children. So you really have the opportunity to give back. Um, and those children can go on to have a better experience of learning, higher aspirations and improved life chances because of your impact as part of a board. So just to let you know of the, some training and support that we have here at Governors for Schools. Um, at Governors for Schools, we want to do more than just place you in a school. We want you to be effective in your governor role as quickly as possible. Therefore, we have a range of free e-learning modules on a number of topics to introduce you to the key elements of the role. We also hold regular webinars so you can continue your learning and have the opportunity to ask our governance experts questions. And once you have been placed at a school, you will also be given 12 months free access to online governor resource and knowledge bank from Governor Hub Knowledge, which is formerly known as the key. Also, in England and Wales, all new governors are able to access free training opportunities through their local authority or multi-academy trust, which will be organised through the school. So moving on to next steps then, and this will be my last, last slide before we kind of open up the floor to more Q&A. Um, so next, it's over to you. I would really, really encourage you to visit our website to complete your online profile, which we share with schools during the process of finding you a suitable governor role. Once you have submitted your application, you will be given a key contact within the partnerships team who will be your first point of contact and will begin looking for opportunities for you. As opportunities arise, they will share these opportunities with you to discuss suitability. Um, so I think I saw in one of the questions someone asked if they could have kind of like a list of the vacancies. So the way that Governors for Schools work, we don't publicly advertise the vacancies. We go through a personalised matching process. So your dedicated team member um, takes the time to look at your application and goes through that personalised matching process to find you the best opportunity within your local community. Um, so they will match your application up with a school based on skill set and locality. Um, each school has a slightly different recruitment process. So once both you and the school are happy to move forward, we'll make the introductions between you to discuss next steps. This can involve an initial chat about the role in the school, a meeting with the head teacher or the chair of governors or both, a visit to the school to have a look around. Um, and then after that, you may be asked to observe a full governing board meeting uh, or have a more formal interview where you will then be offered a place on the board. Following that, you will have an induction process with the school and they will make all of their training and resources available to you also. Um, we are here to track your progress through the process. So we don't just put you in contact with the school and then let you get on with it. We're still there to help you through the progress and ask any questions that you do have and just assist in any way that you need. Um, and that also goes for once you are placed, we're still here to, to, to assist you. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I do believe that is my last slide. So you can apply online at www w.governorsforschools.org.uk. Um, I've also put my personal email address up there. If you feel welcome to take it down and send me any questions that you did have uh, regarding anything I've spoke about today and also our generic email address. Um, so yeah, and now I do believe I will stop sharing my screen and pass back to Lisa. Thank you so much, Claire, <clears throat> and thank you to Raki, both of you. Um, it was that was incredibly insightful and informative. Um, just another reminder to our audience: if you haven't done so already, you're welcome to add a question via the Q and A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, just before we do um, go to a couple of questions, I'm going to share a quick poll, and would really appreciate it if um, you could take a moment just to answer that, as we'd love to hear your thoughts at this stage. Um, but yeah, if we'd like, to, um, I thought maybe. Um, if we could go to the first question. Um, 
let's have a look. There was some there was some great ones actually that that got answered. I wondered whether um, whether Claire might like to touch on those first. Um, there was a couple of questions she said you hadn't um, you'd never heard asked asked before. So I thought that might be a great place to begin. Great, yeah, that was me busy typing oh. away. I will say I've never had so many questions to answer during a presentation. So it's great to see everybody so engaged. Uh, one of the questions that came up was about was there a union for governors, um, which is a brilliant question. And no, there isn't. Um, be interesting to see if that's something that develops over the years. There are lots of support mechanisms, though. So there's a wonderful charity called iGovs who provide lots of support and guidance. There's organisations like Governor Hub and Governor Hub Knowledge that can provide uh, lots of information about kind of what processes you need to follow. So no, there isn't. And I can't remember what the the other question was that I've not had before but generally there's been loads of really great questions <laughs> thank you I I did see I, we can have a look at some of the the ones that have just come in um yeah. so um I've just seen one the what is an average governor for schools application to appointment time please that is a good question. And it varies very much across the country. So Claire obviously works in London. We're in a lovely position in London where we do have more volunteers than vacancies. So it can take a little bit longer to find the right match. So I think we're on average, realistically, eight months in central London. Outside of that, it's more like four months. But bear in mind, you can't be actually appointed until the next governing board meeting. So although that could seem like a really long time, if they've just had a board meeting, say, this week, and we match you with them, you will be in discussions with that school, you'll be going to visits, you can be starting the training, but your actual appointment might not be till, say, June, when they've got their next full governing board meeting. So although it sounds like a really long time, actually, there's lots of stuff going on in the in the in-between times, really. Thank you. Um, and we have another question from uh, from Dan saying, is there an interview process um, which you've... Um... Yeah, so it, vary, it varies by school. So I've been a governor on two different schools, two very different processes. Most schools will look at your application first, invite you in for a conversation. And usually it's quite an informal walk around the school, meet with the head and the chair. Um, and bear in mind when you're going to that meeting, it's for you as much as it is for them to decide if that school feels like the right fit for you. Um, it tends to be larger secondaries and um, further education colleges that have a more kind of rigorous and formal interview process. Um, so it does vary a little bit school by school. Um, thank you. Um, and um, we've got a couple of people have also upvoted this one. What does it mean to be a co-opted or link governor? Great. So co-opted is um, just kind of, I can't, can't think of a better word, but a normal governor. So it's just the governor that is doing everything that everybody else is, but they don't need to have any connection to the school. So they don't need to be a parent. They don't need to be a member of staff. Could have never worked in education, not be a parent at all. You are there as a governor, an independent voice to bring your skills and your perspectives. And then link governor. You can be any type of governor on the board, except for a staff governor, and you might take on a link role. So, for example, I'm a link development governor on my board, so I make sure that I am sharing any useful information or resources or training that I share with the rest of the board. There are some mandatory roles, such as a safeguarding link governor. That governor will work closely with the safeguarding lead within the school to provide that sort of support um, and questioning and making sure that we're compliant. So you basically take on a, a slightly more specific area of responsibility as a link governor and it is optional not everybody has to do that thank you so much we're coming quite near to the end of the time um but maybe we can squeeze another one in um so we've had uh somebody ask if there's a process to withdraw from a governor position so if something changes you did touch on it a little bit earlier but yeah it may, they, they'd like to know a little bit more about how the process to withdraw if they would need to yeah, it's really straightforward, but I would say the more notice you can give your board so they can start to fill your vacancy, the better. But you would simply write a letter to the chair um, offering your resignation. And the, yeah, the more in advance that you can do that, the better. It's literally that simple, though. You you resign as you would from a from a job, really. Thank you. Gosh, there's so 
There's um, so many, so questions. many questions still <laughs> coming in. I wonder we, we, if, if people don't mind, we can hang on for a couple more minutes. Um, uh, as there's obviously so much cause um, call for it. Um, but then obviously, yeah, the, there is a, the opportunity to get in touch with us later. If your question isn't answered, don't worry. Um, but we will try and get race through a couple more quickly now. Um, someone's asked, um, what strategies um, have you in place to attract governors from racially marginalised groups? Oh, it's a great question. Lots of the work we do with people like UCL um, is really effective in bringing a lot more people to boards that don't normally think or wouldn't necessarily consider themselves as a governor. Uh, we work with a vast array of charities as well, which cover most kind of protected characteristics so that we're able to get that message out that actually it's really important to build representation on boards. Part of our work is also with a lot of corporate partners, so large employers who then have what you'd usually call an affinity network. So that might be around um, race and ethnicity or religion or gender identity. And we're able to specifically go out to those people as well to really make sure that everybody knows everybody is welcome on a board. Um, and we're specifically this year running an inclusive governance campaign as well that's all through our social media channels. So please do take a look with the very heavy handed approach of we need a lot more diversity on governing boards. It is so important that pupils can see themselves reflected in that decision making board. So, yes, we're very proactive in trying to encourage a much more diverse range of people to take on board positions. Thank you so much. And I think we'll make this the final one. And thank you so much to everyone who's been able to hang on a little bit longer. Um, do you provide shadowing opportunities so it's possible to experience yourself what it will look like in reality before making any commitments? We don't, in all honesty. And that's because a lot of information discussed on governing boards is confidential. So um, you would need to have the relationship with the school before going to observe a governing board meeting. It is part of the process once you've, <clears throat> excuse me, once you've applied, you've had that initial meeting with the school, you would usually then go and observe a governing board meeting, but you'd need to be that far into the process before going to view a governing board meeting. I should probably also add to that is a lot of the schools do want you to carry out um, a background check. Um, so uh, you need to have that clearance before you go on to sort of um, school premises or start talking about anything specific to uh, those children. And there are specifics to discussed at governing board meetings. So there'll be, uh, you know, content about children with SEND needs, etc., or safeguarding reports and so on. Um, so there is also that process of, of going through to make sure that your uh, background check is is also done. So that's why shadowing is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more difficult, I would say. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. That's been um, incredible. Um, and we've also, yeah, we've had a great res response to the poll as well. Thank you very much to everybody. Um, just to let you know, I know that obviously it's been unfortunate we've not been able to um, to take all of the questions, but we will be sharing tomorrow. We'll be sending out um, details and further information, including how to get in touch with governors for schools. So there is the opportunity. This isn't the end of the conversation if you're still, um, if there's still a question you wanted to ask. Um, so I just wanted to thank every one of our speakers. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today and to each member of our audience for joining. I hope everyone got a real sense of the huge variety of benefits that can arise as a result of becoming a school governor. Um, and finally, we'd love to hear how you found today's event. On the screen, you will see a, a QR code or alternatively in the chat, um, you will see a link, which I'll post in just a moment. Both will take you um, to a very short feedback form and it would be really appreciated if you could just take uh, a couple of minutes of your time to complete it. We'll also send that out tomorrow, as I mentioned, um, for anyone who needs it. So, um, but for, for now, all that leaves me to say is thank you once again to our panel. Thanks to everyone who joined for this session today. And we hope to see you at another UCL Connect event very, very soon. Thanks so much, everyone.